Hello, this is Terry with McHenry Creek Fishers, and let's talk about shipping papers, uh, bill of lading, uh, has waste manifest, there's various kinds. Uh, and if you work around the docks, unloading trucks, uh, bringing off some drums, uh, some totes, uh, cases of any kind of hazardous material, you need to know how to recognize what's on that shipping paper. This is not a DOT class to teach you how to write a shipping paper. This is just for recognition, how to match up that shipping paper to the load that you're, you're bringing in. Uh, hopefully you've already watched my video on uh, hazard classes and placards and labeling. If not, pull it up. It's right there where you found this one. So put the placards, the hazard classes, the labeling video with this shipping paper video, and you'll have a pretty good recognition understanding of what this means. You need to be able to read that shipping paper recognize what it means and how it matches up with your load that you're you're taking off so let's move into this shipping papers you are the shipper generator receiver you may have shipped out some chemicals you generated the shipment and sent it out or you're just unloading stuff that came to your facility you're the receiver now that truck that backed up to your dock yeah that's the carrier transporter remember you are the shipper generator or in probably in your case, if you're watching this, the receiver, you're bringing in some hazardous material to your workplace. Let's take a look at a little bit of responsibility to see how this works. When this material comes to your workplace, the shipper that sent it to you, they've got to follow these guidelines. This is for the DOT rules. Uh, what hazard class is it? And put the proper label on it, proper packaging, the drum, the tote, uh, filled properly, uh, secured in the load, and then shipping papers filled out correctly, very important. And training means that they understand how to, to do the things previously mentioned. Your job, unloading that truck with your chemicals, your drums, your totes, various packages, and then making sure that your shipping paper they sent to you matches up with the load you took off. Now determining the proper shipping name, this is back to the, um, shipper themselves who generate the load to send it to you it's their responsibility to make sure that proper shipping description is done this is where this comes from this is the hazmat regulations the dot hazmat the shipping regulations and it is the uh, hazmat table the hazardous materials table and that's what we're going to look at next all right here's a copy of um a paper copy book of the hazmat regulations on the left there and this is 49 cfr codes of federal regulation remember 29 is osha 40 is the epa 49 that's the dot so here in the center of your uh, screen that's a portion of the hazmat table that's within the regulation that's what we're going to be looking at how to put together a proper shipping description uh, you're looking at columns two three four and five now there's uh, about 10 sections, 10 lines there, 10 columns, and we're gonna look at columns two through five today. This is your proper shipping description. Let's take a look at another item here, just straight out of the book. Here's uh, acetone. This is a called a simple solvent. Uh, it could be mineral spirits, it could be uh, diesel, it could be kerosene, it could be sulfuric acid, a lot of things. They're listed in the table in alphabetical order. And here's columns two, three, four, and five. It's the basics of the proper shipping description, four parts. So you got acetone, then the hazard class, hazard class three for flammable liquids. Remember, refer back to the other video on placarding and labeling and hazard classes. Uh, columns four then is the ID number. All chemicals have a four digit ID number. UN stands for United Nations. NA would be North America only. And then column five, that's the packing group. And we're gonna to touch on that just a little bit later. Let's take a move on to acetone. Now notice I kind of flipped this around the numbers first. Now the proper shipping description is actually UN 1090, acetone three for the hazard class and packing group two. Here's another one, uh, UN 1993 flammable liquids NOS, which means not otherwise specified, it's a generic, hazard class three, and packing group one, two, or three, it depends on the flash point and possibly including the boiling point of the material uh, on the packing group. 
and then alcohols, there's another one. The packing group indicates the severity of the chemical. Uh, pack group one means great danger. Pack group two is medium danger. Pack group three, minor danger. But in perspective, gasoline, sulfuric acid, these are packing group two materials. They're dangerous, but there's things worse than that, and there's things less than that. So in conclusion of that hazmat table, columns two through five, uh, it's again the name in the in the table, then the hazard class, then the number, then the packing group, but in reality, the number comes first. They made a change in 2013, but I've already asked, they are not going to change the printing in the regulation book. The hazmat table is still going to be in alphabetical order. It's just our job to know that the number comes first in a proper shipping description. And I'm going to show you some filled out shipping papers in a few minutes. Take a look at it again, the four parts, acetone, proper shipping name, three, the hazard class, uh, 1090, United Nations or North America ID number, and then the packing group, uh, great danger, medium danger, minor danger in Roman numerals, and always exceptions in DOT, hazard classes two and seven, that's compressed gases or radioactive, and in your case, it's possible you could have some aerosols being shipped in or some kind of cylinders, and you won't see a packing group on that shipping description. Take a look at it again. Proper order, the numbers first, then the name, then the hazard class, then the packing group. Remember, even though the printing in the book shows the name first, they're in alphabetical order, just so you can find them, but the number is first on the shipping paper. Let's match these up. You got your shipping paper on the left, and we're just kind of sticking with the acetone. So there's UN1090, acetone, three, PG2, proper shipping description. Now let's look at our package, the drum. Uh, I see the name and number. Now typically that's not gonna be stenciled on there. It's gonna be a, a packing slip, uh, a sticker on there, a big label that's got the name and number on it. And then I see the uh, hazard class label, flammable liquids, hazard class three. So whatever's on the package has to be on the shipping paper. They have to match up. So there's my 1090 acetone, and the pack, uh, the hazard class three. Now the packing group two means that we've we've purchased or saved a drum that's rated. Uh, the manufacturer of the drum rates their uh, strength, and we've got to have a drum that's rated to packing group two. Uh, and that'll be sometimes embossed on the bottom. It'll it'll show you what the packing group rating is for that drum. Uh, typically, the chemicals we bring in, the, we can send them back out if we wanted to. Um, as waste also, but the, the shipping paper gives us the four parts of the shipping description and it must be on the package, the drum, the name, the number, the hazard class, and we've also purchased the proper drum or saved one that matches the strength. Remember this, this is important, whatever's on the package must be on the shipping paper. They've got to match. So the four parts of shipping description and there's other descriptors that you could see on your shipping paper. Let's take a look at some of the things you might see. For instance, LQ would be limited quantity. That's on a, uh, usually a, a box. It's combination package. You've got bottles or jars, glass, metal, something containers inside a box, maybe four one gallon jugs of bleach or something in a cardboard box, uh, six or eight or 12 pints or quarts of a flammable liquid inside a cardboard box. And there's exceptions to how you ship that. Um, they sometimes won't even have a shipping description. They'll just have a bill of lading, but that's limited quantity. Stuff you see at the store, at Walmart, at Dollar General, at Home Depot and other places. Uh, another one is a generic, like we saw flammable liquids NOS, not otherwise specified. There'll be a G in column one. Remember our shipping description is columns two through five. Column one has some symbols and G, uh, that's column one. All you're gonna do is add a chemical that makes it flammable. If we're using 1993 flammable liquids in OS, in column one, there's a G, and then in parentheses in our shipping description, we'll just put down uh, acetone, alcohol, whatever the flam whatever makes it flammable. And if it's a hazardous waste manifest, the word waste will be in the shipping description. I'll show you one of those in a minute. Now here's the fourth one. Uh, it's called hazardous substance. Uh, this is part of an, another additional descriptor. Uh, RQ would be added to our shipping description. 
to be a hazardous substance, we're going to look at the hazardous substance table, which follows the hazmat table. It's called Appendix A, and it has to meet two criteria. If, if our chemical is listed in the uh, hazardous substance table, Appendix A, and it meets or exceeds its reportable quantity in one container, uh, then we would just put RQ as an additional descriptor. Remember, there's four basic parts of the shipping description, and then there's possibly some additional descriptors. All right, let's take a close look at a bill of lading, a shipping paper. Uh, at the top, you can see it says it's shipping paper, bill of lading, hazardous materials. Uh, could be your solvents. It could be some acids or caustics you bring in, whatever. So let's look at this, uh, the red uh, proper shipping description. I've got the arrows pointing up. You see the number, the name, the hazard class, the packing group. Now on the left, you're also seeing how much, how many boxes, how much pounds, that sort of thing. Uh, look just to the left of the arrows and you'll see HM, the hazards material, an X. If it's hazardous material, that X would go there. Uh, you could see RQ there if it's a reportable quantity. But the basics of this shipping paper is, is simple. There it is. 1090 acetone 3 PG2. Now that will be on the markings and labeling of your drum. The markings, the name, the number. There it is. The, the hazard class is going to be the DOT label on that drum. But this is a shipping paper. This is a bill of lading that you're going to see the driver will have. This is showing you what you're offloading. You pull off a couple of drums on a pallet, and they are, there they are right there. It'll be listed in uh, whatever is on the package, got to be on the shipping paper. Now, right under that acetone, there's stuff we can't pronounce sometimes, some of the names of these chemicals, uh, but you notice it's the number, the name, the hazard class. In this case, it's showing a subsidiary, a secondary hazard, so it'll, that container will have two labels, three and eight, three for ha uh, flammable liquids, eight for corrosive, and it's a packing group two. Let's look at another one. This is a hazardous waste manifest. And you see the top left corner, the uniform hazardous waste manifest. And down in the four line items, we've got uh, some paint. Uh, they've brought in some paint on a, with a bill of lading that they offload in the warehouse. Now they've used it in the process. They've cleaned up after painting with some solvent and they've got a bunch of paint waste. So here's how this is going to be written up. Uh, it's 1263. That's the four digit ID number for paint. And then it says waste paint. Remember the additional descriptor. Uh, hazard class three, flammable liquid, PG3. Uh, we'll use the term a lot of times watered down. Uh, and notice in this ship inscription, it is a hazard, considered a hazardous substance. The RQ is listed there. So our four parts of a ship description are here but we've got two additional descriptors. This is UN 1263 paint, hazard class three, pad group three. But also we had to word, add the word waste. This is a waste manifest, shipping it off as waste. Uh, and then it's also an RQ reportable quantity. So it's not too difficult uh, to match this up. Look at that bill of lading. Look at that shipping paper. Uh, read it. There's, there it is again. 1090 acetone 3 PG2. All chemicals are going to have this four digit, four part shipping description. And remember the exception you may see would be aerosol cans possibly. And if you receive some cases of aerosols, they don't have a packing group. Uh, but there's four parts to the basic shipping description. And then match up when you're offloading trucks, match up your drums, your boxes, your totes with the shipping paper. Make sure you know what you're offloading. They have to match up and only offload what is yours. Don't take any chances. This is why it's important that you understand how to, the basics of looking at a shipping paper and the basics of understanding what the drums, how they're marked and labeled. So after you've completed this, make sure you've watched the other video on placarding, especially for labels and the hazard classes. Uh, I explain all that to you so you can recognize everything you pull off that truck. So again, thanks for watching. Um, tell your safety manager, give us a call sometime if you need some more help. But this is Terry with McHenry Creek Fishers and have a fun day.